Good morning, and welcome to today's Daily Dose. Time. It's a funny thing, right? Time's a wasting. In the nick of time. Time is money. No time. All kinds of time. Killing time. Lost time. Father time. Time waits for no one. Time flies when you're having fun, and time drags when you're not. And of course, sometimes we have too much time on our hands. But time is also a serious subject. Pastor Matt's very first message here at Journey was the rocking chair perspective. If you haven't seen it, it's online. Fantastic. Check it out. But it was about the time that we have here between the infant rocking chair and the old age rocking chair. A couple Sundays ago, he taught us about the beginning of time and the end of time and saying yes to God in the in-between. God has a plan. We hear that a bunch, and usually it's followed with for your life, and that's true. But in a global sense, God has a universal, really big plan that he will accomplish in his time. We're often lucky enough to have a part in it, or at least the choice to have a part in it. Esther is a young woman in the Bible, and she has a beautiful story about this very choice, to say yes, Lord, and be part of his plan in a very critical time or not. So Esther was a young Jewish woman in exile in Persia, raised by her uncle Mordecai, a Jewish priest. She finds herself married to King Xerxes, the king of all Persia. So she's the queen of all Persia. And sometime later, a guy in the court, Haman, an Agagite, who was a friend of the king, and Agagites were mortal enemies of the Jews. Historically, they hated each other, convinces King Xerxes to allow him to have the Jews exterminated all on a certain day. And so the king's like, whatever, and he lets him send out a proclamation in the king's name all over the empire of Persia. So it's not, it's not secret, it's public. Everybody knows this is going to happen, and so the Jews are terrified. And Mordecai gets a message to Esther, and he tells her, he's like, look, you're married to the king. This is what's going to happen to your people. You need to go and intercede for your people. Here's the proclamation he shows her. And so she sends a message back and says, look, dude, you don't understand how the court works. The king summons you to come in and talk to him. And anybody that has the audacity to just go bopping in and say, hey, husband king, I got an issue I need to talk to you about is subject to execution. That's the law. I can't go in there. It's just I can't do it. And so to the point today, Mordecai sends her an answer and he tells her, do not think that because you're in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For you, if you remain silent in this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So Mordecai is telling Esther that God's purpose is going to be accomplished whether she chooses to participate or not. And so is she ready at this time for the time such as this? Is she ready to say yes to God and put her own personal agenda aside and focus on God's big universal big plan? So with Esther, yes. The question, yeah, she is. But our question today when there's a choice to participate in God's universal plan, to participate in that one moment of time, are you ready? Am I ready to say yes in such a time as this? I pray that our answer is, yes, Lord. We focus on your big picture. Have a great day.